Good morning. Uh, today we are going to be covering rational exponents. We have covered on the last chapter just exponents. Today are rational exponents. The rational constant word ratio, which means that we are going to be having fractions as the exponents. And we're going to be covering three of the basic properties of exponents. And we're going to apply those to rational exponents. Now, the first one is the product of powers property. If we have two terms multiplying and they have the same base, we can just go ahead and add the exponents. So in this case, we have 9 to the 1 third multiplied by 9 to the 2 thirds. If you notice they have the same base, we're going to be adding the exponents. So we just have 9. They have the same denominator, so we can just add 1 plus 2 is 3, and the denominator is kept. So we just have 9 to the 1 power, or just 9. When the exponent's outside, it's a power of powers property, we are going to be multiplying. In this case, we have 27 to the 1 half, and then we have 2 to the 4 thirds. We are going to multiply the exponents. The base will stay the same, 27. 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. Remember, when you multiply, you just multiply across. Now, let's go and reduce our exponents. So, I'll be 27 and divide by 2. So, I'll be 2 over 3. Now, remember, on the last section, we are able to simplify this. So, we're going to rewrite it as a radical, 27. This denominator for the exponent is the root, and then the 2 is the exponent. Now, the cube root of 27, I'm looking for a number that multiplied by itself 3 times, gives me 27. That'll be 3, and I still have my square, and 3 squared is equal to 9. So my final answer will be 9 as well. For the quotient of powers property, if we are two terms and they have the same base, we can subtract the exponents. In this case, they have the same base, 125, the top and the bottom. We need to subtract. Remember, to subtract, we need to have the same denominator. They do have the same denominator, so we can just have 125, 2 thirds minus 1 third will be 1 third, 2 minus 1 is 1, the denominator stays the same. And we are going to be able to rewrite it. Now at this point, you should be able to think that this is the cube root of 125, which is equal to 5. So I want you guys to start thinking that 125 automatically to the 1 third is equal to 5. Let's go and start with example number 1. On example number 1, I need to be able to simplify. They have the same base, so I can just go ahead and add the exponents. So it'll be 3. The base stays the same. Do not multiply 3 times 3. The base will stay the same. We are going to go ahead and add the exponents. So in order to add, they have to have the same denominator. They do, so we can just add. 5 plus 1 will give me 6. Denominator stays the same. I'm going to simplify, so it gives me 3 to the second power. And that is equal to 9. For letter B, when the exponent is outside the parentheses, we're going to use the power of property property, which is the second one. We're going to multiply. That'll be 27 stays the same. When you multiply, you don't need to have the same denominator. We can just multiply across. 2 times 1 will give me 2. 3 times 2 will give me 6. I'm going to reduce my fraction. So divide by 2 gives me 1 over 3. Same thing as mentioned right now. 27 to the 1 third is the same thing as a cube root of 27, which is equal to 3. For letter C, when they're dividing, if they have the same base, 
we can go ahead and subtract that exponent. So we're using the quotient of powers property. 3 fifths minus 2 fifths. When we subtract, we need to have the same denominator. In this case, they already do. So this will be 1. 3 minus 2 is 1 over 5. I want you to think as one, 32 to the 1 fifth as the cube root or the fifth root of 32. So I'm looking for a number that multiplies by itself 5 times gives me 32, which is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. Now let this a little more complex. We have an exponent outside, so I'm just going to multiply by each of the exponents that are inside the numerator and the denominator. So we have 5, 1 half times 2. In order to multiply a whole number by a fraction, I'm going to place it over 1. Positive times negative is negative. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. I'm going to do the same thing with the denominator. I have 8. In order to multiply a whole number by a fraction, I'm going to place it over 1. Positive times negative is negative. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. I'm going to reduce my fraction of, of, for the exponent. So be 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. When I have a negative exponent, to make it positive, I switch it to the bottom. If it's a negative exponent on the bottom, I switch it to the top. So this is the case where you have to switch both of them because they both are negative. So I have 8 over 5. Notice that this one becomes a positive, but I no longer need the exponent. I don't need to place a 1. So my answer will be just 8 bits. Let's continue with example number 2. On example number 2, we start to have variables. And they are multiplying x to the one third multiplied by x to the one fifth. Because they're multiplying, I'm going to go ahead and add the exponents. The base will stay the same. I need to add one third plus one fifth. They need to have the same denominators, and they don't. So I'm going to make them the same denominators. I'm going to have the same denominator will be 15. Multiply the left by 5, the right by 3. That will give me 5 over 15 plus 3 over 15, which is equal to 8 over 15. 5 plus 3 is 8. The denominators kept the same. So that will be the exponent. We can now reduce it, so we just leave it as this. For letter B, the exponents outside the parentheses, so we're going to multiply. Don't forget to place the exponent for the 8. Automatically, there's a 1, so I want you guys to automatically place your exponent if you're going to multiply. 1 times 1 third will give me 8 to the 1 third. To multiply a whole number by a fraction, I'm going to place it over 1. So I'll be y, 12 times 1 is 12, 1 times 3 is 3. I'm going to simplify it. 8 to the 1 third is equal to 2. Remember, that's the cube root of 8. y to the 12 over 3. 12 over 3 is equal to 4. For letter C, when they're dividing, I'm going to go ahead and subtract my exponents. They don't have the same denominator. When I subtract or add, I need to have the same denominator. So let me write them down underneath. I know that the x will stay there. That'll be 3 over 7 minus 1 third. The common denominator will be 21. I'm going to multiply by 3 on the left hand side. I'm going to multiply by 7 on the right hand side. So that will give me 9 over 21 minus 7 over 21 as well. 9 minus 7 is 2. The denominator is kept the same. Remember, I multiply 3 times 7. That's 21. So my exponent will be 2 over 21. We basically just subtract the exponents. Letter D. 
I'm going to go and reduce my fraction first. They don't have an exponent, so I can just go and reduce it like any normal fraction. So it'll be 1 over 3. Let's go and deal with the x's first. I'm going to subtract the exponent because they're divided. So 3 fourths minus 1 fourth, 3 minus 2, 3 minus 1 is 2. So it'll be x, 2 fourths. There's only one y, so let's not forget about the y. Then for the z's, I'm not going to bring negative exponents, we bring them down. So that'll be z to the one third. I'm not going to add the exponents because now they're multiplying. So it'll be z, 2 plus 1 is 3, and denominator is 3. Remember, they have the same denominator, so we were fine. I'm going to go and simplify this is x to the one half. I don't longer need the one. I'm not going to place the one in there, so it'll be just x to the one half y three z will be three divided by three is one or just z. And that's it for example number two. Let's continue on the back side. On the back side, we're going to be simplifying radical expressions. And we want to be able to simplify to the simplest form. Now, if you guys remember, there are two ways that you guys can do square root of 50. Square root of 50 will be the square root of 25 times square root of 2. So it'll be 5 square root of 2. Or we can do the factor tree. So that'll be 5 times 10. 5 is a prime number. This will be 2 times 5. And they both are prime numbers. I'm going to go ahead and place them both inside. So I'll be 2, I'll be 5. Of a five. This is a square root, and I'm taking out pairs. Five times five is twenty-five. The square root of twenty-five is just five. Inside, there's a lonely two. Remember, we're only taking out pairs. The reason that we're only taking out pairs is because there's a little two that we never write down. Automatically, if there's no number in there, we automatically know that's a square root. So we never write down that two. And this is my final answer. 5 square root of 2. Now when we're dealing with cubes, let's go and deal with the numbers outside, the radicals. We're going to multiply those two. That'll be 6. Inside the radical, I'm going to place all the prime numbers for 15 and 18. So let's start with 18. That'll be 9 times 2. 2 is a prime number. This will be 3 times 3, they both are prime numbers. 15 will be 3 times 5, and they both are prime numbers. I'm going to place them in order. I have a 2, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 3, and then I have 1, 5. I want to take out triplets, because it's a 3, I'm going to take out groups of 3. So this is a group of 3, it's going to come out. I still have my 6, let's not forget about the 6. And then the 3 came out. Anything that comes out? No. There's only 1, 2, and 1, 5. We need groups of 3 because this is a cube root. Cube root, 2 times 5, is left inside. Let's simplify. 6 times 3 is 18. And the cube root of inside will be a 10. 2 times 5 is 10. So 18 cube root of 10. Let's continue with letter C. First time that we have a variable inside the radical, first I'm going to do my factor tree for 32. That'll be 8 times 4. 8 will be 4 times 2. 2 is a prime number. 4 will be 2 times 2. 4 will be 2 times 2. Inside the radical, I'm going to place all of the 2s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of the prime numbers. 3, 4, 5. And let's go and also expand the x's. So we have x, x, and x. Just as I mentioned above, there's a little 2 hidden in here. So I'm going to take out my pairs, groups of 2. I'm going to take out one group of 2. One group of 2. And there's a 2 in there. I'm going to group, take out a group of x's. Inside, there's going to be 
a 2 and an x. So let's go and simplify this. 2 times 2 is 4. x. Inside we have a 2x. And that's my final answer. Now for letter D, you can do the same thing. You can expand it. But let's try to think about the process. Now, we need to take out groups of 4. So the factors of 10 are 2 and 5. We can't take anything out. So inside, we are going to have a 10. Remember, we're taking out groups of 4. How many x's are inside? There are 5 of them. How many groups of 4 can we take out? One group of four. How many x's are left inside? One. For the y's, how many y's are inside? Eight. How many can we take out? How many groups of four? Two groups of four. So we're going to take out two groups of y. How many are left inside? None. There were two groups of four that were taken out, and there were all of those that were inside. Z's. How many groups of 4 can I take out? 2. Very good. So Z squared. How many are left inside? 2. Now that's one way of doing it. So another way of doing it is if you want to be able to expand it, just like I did here on the bottom, you can take out your groups of 4. So group of 4. And x comes out. Inside, if you guys notice, inside we have the 2 and the 5. There are no pairs for the numbers or no groups of 4. So we have 2 times 5. And there's an x left over inside. Then for the y's, how many groups of 4? We have one group. We have another group. And there's no Y's left over. Z's, I can take out a group of four and a group of four. And there are two Z's left over. Or we can rewrite it, or we can, we can simplify as X. Y times Y is Y squared. Z times Z is Z squared. Inside, we have two times five is 10. X and two Z's, so Z squared. So if you guys notice, I get exactly the same result. Now, I prefer if you actually just do it the short way. Try to do it in your head. But if you must, you can always expand. This will conclude the lesson for today. Uh, have a great day. And please email me if you have any questions. Have, uh, thank you so much.